Hi everyone, in this series we continue working on the Cybertruck. In the previous part the body was completely welded, cleaned of rust and primed. Now the priming is dry and we need to install the wheels and lower the Cybertruck. By the way, how do you like such big wheel travel? I hope it'll be possible to keep it in the future. Also, in order the Cybertruck won't lie on the arches, we need to install the airbags back into the suspension. For now the lack of the door locks feels inconvenient. They constantly open and interfere with work. We'll use such type of door locks. They'll be attached through a slab welded to the door. As the doors will have no external handles, we should think about the remote opening. The rod will be moved with the help of the electric drive of door lock. Its power is quite enough to open the lock. In order the rod can return in its place we need to find a spring. In theory, this is how all this gonna work. After the lock took its place, we need to weld the lock bolt to the aperture. We're gonna weld a protrusion for the bolt from the slab, which will be later carefully hidden under the casing. After the rear door we can make the same thing with the passenger door. Till now the doors look quite empty. Later we'll weld a reinforcing frame into them, to which the door casing will be attached. The locks were also installed on the driver's side. We tried to install the locks correctly at once, it'll make the adjustment in the future much easier. Although these locks allow small adjustment of the door canvas. The limiters were also installed on the door. Now we can move on to the electric motor installation. Let me remind you that the power unit will be used from the Nissan LEAF. It consists of a charging module that charges a standard high voltage battery with a voltage of 400 volts. An inverter that converts a direct voltage of a traction battery into an alternate current required for a three-phase electric motor work. And the most important thing, an electric motor with a reduction gear 1 to 9, which I hope will get under the Cybertruck hood. Now we need to disassemble the power unit into the modules. I did it for the first time and didn't know how to separate them, so I thought the screws were under the charging cover. After some examination of all the insides in detail, I didn't find any fasteners, but I saw the copper bus bars that moved into another module. I removed the cover and saw the bolts. After they were unscrewed the head simply got removed, we didn't even have to disassemble the charge. After unscrewing the cover by experience I found more bolts, unscrewed them and removed the inverter module. It's very convenient during the repair process because the burned module can be changed within the minutes. Most importantly that it'd be in stock. Next goes the motor with a reduction gear. I wanna install these details under the Cybertruck hood in this way. The reduction ratio will be large. Just what we need for an SUV. 
As I said in the last video, I'd need a pre-styling inverter to start the electric motor. Of course, as always, you can't just do it without some certain improvements. First, you need to cheat the inverter so that it doesn't shut down and think that it uses a standard charged 400 volt battery. Then any battery pack can be used with a voltage of from 20 to 400 volts. It greatly simplifies the search and the assembly of the battery, and it'll be safer to use 200 volts instead of 400. Arduino will be soldered to the stabilizer on the car to power it. And the false signal wire will be soldered instead of the brown wire on the card. Next, we need to connect the inverter to the resolver on the electric motor. In simple words, the inverter should understand in what position and at what speed the motor rotor is spinning. Everything also turned out to be not so easy, as the restyling wiring absolutely didn't fit the old inverter. Fortunately, the socket was the same. We need to completely swap the plug and add the terminal screws. I'll take the terminal screws from the unnecessary plugs, they are all the same. They cannot be simply removed, as the stopper doesn't have pin. I had to break the plugs. By the way, I regretted this later after forgetting that I needed a resolver plug. I broke it and ate away at my own nerves with the terminal screws until I ordered a new one. After remaking the plug I connected it to the inverter and connected the wires without the terminal screw to the resolver. The inverter is controlled via CAN signal. For this purpose we connected a pair of wires to the Arduino. It's possible to connect an electronic pedal to it. Till now it'll be a variable resistor. The battery for testing will be the one from an 80 volt electric bike. There are capacitors in the inverter and in order to charge them smoothly without clicking while turning on, we'll use an incandescent light bulb. Later we'll install the variable resistor. The phase conductors were also connected to the electric motor. The voltage can be applied. By tradition, I've never managed to deal with electronics from the first time. No matter how hard I tried and checked the diagrams for several times I still couldn't start the installation. Also had a thought that some modules were faulty. I asked for the advice from the proficient who also assembles different vehicles with his own hands on the electric traction. We checked all the modules together. They turned out to be working, which means that something was wrong with the connection. I spent some time thinking and checking all possible variants. I took off the servo and the reduction gear itself so that it wouldn't interfere yet. Without it the engine looks small and it's hard to believe that such little fellow can produce 110 horsepowers at the standard voltage. A few days later by some pure accident, I set the resistance to maximum position and turned on the installation. And what do you think? The engine got started while rotating counterclockwise. This means that I used to turn on the installation with the gas pedal pressed into the floor. The inverter noticed this, switched the shutdown mode and turned off the power. There was an error in the drawn scheme. I've lost so much time because of such tiny thing. At that point I was very angry with the artist who painted it. Now I certainly don't hold much against him. The main thing is that the engine got started, that means it's half the battle. Next, we need to connect the reduction gear to the gearbox. You'll see all this and the first ride in the next series.